Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth stimulus check and news update. In today's update, we have a lot to get into, but first, if you would like to receive a couple free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link in the description box below. Okay, so diving right into the update for today, every single Democrat, all 220 of them, voted in favor of moving forward with the $3.5 trillion budget resolution. This measure also included a rule that they must also vote on the bipartisan infrastructure package by no later than September 27th. As we all probably remember, this package already passed in the Senate and now just needs to be passed through the House before being signed into law. From here, the hope among progressive Democrats is that they're able to pass the larger bill based around human infrastructure at around the same time or even before the bipartisan infrastructure package is voted on. And as I just mentioned, there is now a September 27th deadline for the House to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The fear among progressive Democrats is that the more moderate Democrats get their way on that bill and that bill gets passed, but then they turn around and vote no on the larger, much more partisan bill. The centrist Democrats could say, President Biden already got a win with the bipartisan bill, but we can't support this larger bill with all these tax increases in it. Because of this fear, we may see the more progressive wing of the Democrat party decide to reject the bipartisan bill when it's actually voted on. Also, three and a half trillion dollars. That's a lot of money spent. So obviously we have two very different perspectives on the spending, depending on who you speak to. Here's Republican representative Madison Cawthorn speaking his thoughts on the bill, calling it a death wish for America. Madam Speaker, you have squandered the inheritance of a generation today. You have governed with abandon and exchanged financial assurance for instant gratification. Today, you didn't pass a budget plan. You passed a death wish for America. It is easy for you to sit up there and authorize $68 trillion over the next 10 years because you will never have to shoulder the financial burden of your actions. Your roadmap for our future is a highway to hell. You have exchanged the American dream for a socialist nightmare. To the American people, you have been lied to. Your taxes will be raised because of the actions of Democrats today. I shudder to think of what our country, our city on a hill, our beacon of freedom will look like in a generation we have delivered a nation devoid of treasure to our children. We will give account one day for our actions in this Congress. If we hand over a bankrupt legacy to our children, your actions today will be indicted and you will be without excuse. Madam Speaker, you are walking around with my generation's checkbook and we want it back. Then we have Democratic Representative Darren Soto saying that the American people have spoken and praises their unity around President Biden's agenda. The American people have spoken, Madam Speaker. It's time to build back better. Today's historic vote shows that President Biden and the Democratic Congress are united. And we are keeping our promises to the American people who put us in office. Today, we move forward on the bipartisan infrastructure package to rebuild our nation. Today, we move forward on the Build Back Better Reconciliation Bill to invest in American families. And today, we move forward on restoring the Voting Rights Act to protect our democracy. And it's not a moment too soon. Florida's 9th Congressional District is the fastest growing district in the nation, 40% growth as I represent 955,000 constituents. Whether it's Central Florida or across the nation, it's time to upgrade America's roads, bridges, ports, airports, rural broadband, clean water, resilient and renewable energy. It's time to make childcare costs and workforce education more affordable. It's time to help our seniors, middle-class tax cuts, combat climate change, and build back better. With that said, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you believe that either of these bills should pass through and be signed into law? Okay, so now I just wanted to quickly issue a reminder that you will only have a few more days if you wish to unenroll in the September child tax credit payments. These payments will be issued on the 15th of next month, and if you wish to unenroll, you'll need to do so by the 30th of August. To do so, you'll need to log into the Child Tax Credit Update Portal and choose the option to unenroll. 
By doing this, you'll stop receiving monthly payments for the rest of this year, but in return, you'll end up receiving a larger tax refund next year. So pretty much, you're either electing to choose the money up front, which pads your wallet just a little bit more now, or if you don't necessarily need the money right now, you can opt to receive a larger tax refund next year. So really no right or wrong answer here, just personal preference. With that said, let me know in the comment section below whether or not you've been eligible for the child tax credit payments, and if so, how much have they helped you? Being that they currently have an extension of the enhanced child tax credit in their bill based around human infrastructure, it would be a huge win for Democrats if they could get that passed within the next couple of months. In a tweet by Democratic Senator Cory Booker, he states, in order for this progress to continue, we must now make the child tax credit expansion permanent. Please join us in calling on lawmakers to get this done. Another proposal by Senator Booker, which he's pushing to be included in the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, is his baby bonds proposal. In this proposal, every single newborn in America would be granted $1,000, which would then be tucked away into a savings account. From there, the government would regularly deposit additional money up to $2,000 per year for children in low-income households. These funds would then sit in a low-risk account managed by the Treasury where they would expect to see returns right around 3% per year. Then, by the age of 18, which would be the time many of these children would possibly be looking at college, the account could rise all the way up to $46,000 according to some estimates. Oh, and in case you're wondering, account holders would not have access to any of this money until they reach the age of 18, and they would only be able to use the money on education, home ownership, or retirement. If you look at the chart up on the screen, depending on the family's income, their children will receive different amounts of money. For families of four, if they receive less than $25,000 per year, their children will receive the full $2,000 per year. Then, for families of four that earn over $126,000 per year, their children, on the other hand, will earn nothing at all. Now, this proposal is estimated to cost around $60 billion in additional spending per year, and while it could definitely help, it definitely could have some drawbacks as well. Even if this proposal is not included in the upcoming reconciliation bill, most families can attempt to replicate it by investing into a 529 savings plan. Let's say that you get an average annual return of 6%. You can invest $2,000 when your baby is born into a 529 plan, then invest an additional $50 per month, and by the time your child turns the age of 18, you'll have an accumulated balance of nearly $25,000. You'll also have the ability in most states to deduct your 529 plan contribution and you also won't be taxed on the money that you do eventually withdraw as long as they're for qualified educational expenses. So in other words, all the money that you do earn in this account won't be taxed at all. So just something to keep in mind there and even investing just a little bit each and every month can definitely add up over the years. With that said, do you believe that Senator Booker's baby bonds plan is a good one? And also, are you currently using a 529 plan? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. In some other news, for those of you that have already filed your tax returns this year and paid money on unemployment benefits that you received last year, you may be receiving some additional money from the IRS very, very soon. If you remember, since the American Rescue Plan was signed into law, the first $10,000 for single filers or $20,000 for joint filers was made non-taxable at the federal level. Most people, since the bill was signed into law, already received the additional money, but there are unfortunately still some people left behind. However, for the month of August, the IRS announced that it's expecting to send out an additional $1.5 million in refunds with their latest batch of payments, so this should come as some very good news for those of you who are still waiting on your additional tax refund. Also, just out of curiosity and to sort of let other people know who may be waiting on their tax refund, let me know in the comment section below whether or not you've received your full tax refund or maybe you're still waiting on partial amounts of it. Let me know your status below and maybe some other people who are still waiting on their full tax refund. It might feel a little bit better if they know that other people are waiting as well. And finally, just because I think that this does need to be addressed at the moment in the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, 
nor in the bipartisan infrastructure bill is there a forced stimulus check. There's not really a whole lot of talks on that forced stimulus check at the moment. There are some progressive Democrats who are for a forced stimulus check. I think they would vote for it if it was included in the bill. But at this time, they're not making it a red line for them. Now, if they were to make it a red line and say, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, we need a forced stimulus check to be in this bill, or we're not going to vote for it, that could put a little bit more pressure on Pelosi to include one. But at the same time, we might have these moderate Democrats, thank Joe Manchin, thank Kirsten Sinema, if there was a forced stimulus check included, that could make it so they won't vote for the bill. So, you know, there's kind of this balance here. If there is a forced stimulus check included, we probably wouldn't have the moderate Democrats vote for the bill. And if there's not one included, well, at this moment, it's not really a red line. For the progressive wing, they're not making it a red line. So at the moment, there is not a forced stimulus check included. But in the future, if anything does happen to change, I'll definitely make sure to keep you guys updated. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And as always, if you did enjoy the content in today's video and you would like to see more videos like it, I would greatly appreciate if you quickly give this video a thumbs up. That definitely does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And until I go, once again, don't forget to grab your two free socks from Weeble. The first one you will receive just for opening an account. And the second one you'll receive after making a qualified deposit of at least $5. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you guys and I hope you have a great day today.